This photograph, discovered by police, would lead a heartbroken family to their loved one, missing for almost 40 years. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 creepiest photos linked to true crimes. It was a horrifying plea. For heaven's sake, catch me before I kill more. I cannot control myself. For this list, we'll be looking at the most horrifying photographs that have come from actual crime stories. Which of these unsettled you the most? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10, Leonard Lake's cabin. This photo is quite unassuming at first. It's an aerial shot of a rubble-strewn building with various crew members working amongst the debris. It's a sight that millions of people see every day on their way to and from work. But this is actually the compound of Leonard Lake, and it hosted some nightmarish atrocities. Lake and his accomplice, Charles Ng, took their victims to this cabin in the Sierra Nevada foothills and committed horrible acts against them before ending their lives. It's believed that the duo killed up to 25 people inside the cabin, and authorities later found the likes of videotapes and human remains at the site. Number 9. Cherie Miller In July of 1984, a man named William Bradford met young bartender Cherie Miller at the meat market in Los Angeles. After convincing Miller that he was a professional photographer, he extended a proposition to take some photos of her. She agreed, and the two drove north into the desert of California. Bradford took various photographs of Miller, who can be seen wearing a pair of denim shorts. Soon after the photos were taken, Bradford killed Miller and took her body back to Hollywood, where he abandoned it in an alley. Bradford was a predator who was out on bail at the time of Miller's killing. She was just one of a potential 28 victims. Number 8. Dahmer's Drum It's amazing how a story can recontextualize a picture. This seemingly harmless photo depicts a blue plastic drum in the corner of an old room, nothing too strange or malicious, until you realize what's inside the vat. It belonged to Jeffrey Dahmer, who was probably the most notorious serial killer in American history. One of Dahmer's survivors took note of the drum while inside the house and noticed a very strong and unpleasant smell coming from it. When Dahmer was finally caught, investigators uncovered the drum and found it was filled with hydrochloric acid and human remains. Dahmer was going full Breaking Bad and dissolving his victims inside the drum. Number 7. John Lennon and Mark David Chapman a very famous photo taken by Paul Goresh shows John Lennon signing an autograph while a man in glasses stands over his left shoulder. Thousands of photos just like this were taken throughout Lennon's career, but this one is steeped in malice. This photo was taken around 5 p.m. on the evening of December 8, 1980. Nearly six hours later, Lennon returned home and was shot by the man in the photo. Lennon was shot and killed at about 11 o'clock last night outside his apartment building. The very same man he had given an autograph to earlier in the evening. This, of course, is Mark David Chapman, and he had been planning to kill Lennon for months. While Chapman watched Lennon sign his album, he knew he would kill him just a few hours later. Number six, Karen Sprinker. Here's five-year-old Jerome Brutus. He finds this pair of women's shoes. Something had made him pick those up. Throughout the late 1960s, a man named Jerry Brudos killed at least four women in Oregon. So he brings home this pair of women's shoes, and, uh, and he begins to wear them around the house. One of them was an 18-year-old named Karen Sprinker. On March 27, 1969, Brudos was wearing women's clothing and scoured a department store parking lot for victims. He found Sprinker and kidnapped her at gunpoint. She was beautiful. I said I'd take some photos of her. Is that when you invited her in? Brudos then took her to his personal garage and made her put on underwear while he took photos. One of them has been released and shows a calm-looking Sprinker gazing into the lens. Shortly after the photo was taken, Brudos killed Sprinker and put her body into the Willamette River. Number 5. Ted's Tools Few serial killers are as notorious as Ted Bundy. His name is synonymous with evil, and he may have killed up to 36 women throughout the mid-70s. Well, detectives tried to track a man who slipped into a sorority house early yesterday and murdered two women. The killer struck first at the Chi Omega sorority house. Police say he was armed with a heavy oak log. 
Bundy was arrested in the early morning of August 16, 1975 by patrolman Bob Hayward. And when Hayward searched Bundy's vehicle, he discovered a treasure trove of suspicious material. Inside the Volkswagen Beetle, and later photographed for the world to see, were the likes of garbage bags, an ice pick, rope, gloves, a ski mask, and more. Unfortunately, there wasn't enough solid evidence to hold Bundy at the time, and he was promptly released from custody. Washington missed you. Utah gave you away. Colorado lost you. I'm gonna fry you. He went on to kill again before he was finally captured for good in February of 1978. Number four, the Columbine class picture. It's pictures like this that prove the volatility of life. You never know the types of people you're literally sitting beside. Parents, hug your kids. Pray to pray that be happy that you're with them. Kids, grab your friends, hold them tight, and never be mad at people because. It could happen in a second that they'll be gone. This photo shows the Columbine High School class of 1999. In the top left corner, some boys can be seen making gun gestures with their hands. Two of these boys are Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, who just weeks later would enact the historic Columbine attack. On April 20th, 1999, Harris and Klebold killed 13 at their high school. The perps would also take their own lives, bringing the total body count to 15. Even more were injured, and Columbine became an international talking point. Number three, Rodney Alcala's photos. A vicious man who killed at least eight, Rodney Alcala is famously known as the dating game killer, as he once appeared on the titular game show. Between takes, he might find him skydiving or motorcycling. Please welcome Rodney Alcala. Rod, welcome. While searching his home and his personal storage locker, investigators found over 1,000 photographs, many of which depicted people in sensual poses. 120 of these photos were eventually released to the public in the hopes of identifying the subjects. The released photographs are not explicitly sensual in nature, but merely depicts people, mainly young women, posing in artful manners. The San Antonio police refused to take a missing persons report on Chris because she was an adult. It's unclear how many of these subjects were killed by Alcala, but at least one missing persons case, that of 28-year-old Christine Thornton, was solved with the help of the photographs. Her smile shared by a tragic list of young women and girls who trusted a charming stranger, only to discover a dark secret that began back in the fall of 1968. Number two, a message from the lipstick killer. Later that morning in the bedroom, police found a crumpled up ransom note left by the culprit. It read, get $20,000 ready and wait for word. Do not notify FBI or police. Bills in fives and tens. While his conviction is controversial, the lipstick killer is thought to be Illinois criminal William Herons. The lipstick killer got his name from a particularly creepy crime scene, and this crime scene was famously photographed. Frances Brown was killed inside her apartment, and the perp left behind a message for whoever came across her body. Scrawled on the wall in lipstick were the words, For heaven's sake, catch me before I kill more. I cannot control myself. Unfortunately, the killer did indeed strike again, kidnapping and taking the life of the young Suzanne Degnan. This occurred just one month after the death of Brown. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into settings and switch on your notifications. Number 1. Ed Gein's House the inspiration behind numerous fictional killers like Norman Bates and Leatherface, Ed Gein is a notorious body snatcher who fashioned himself one nightmarish house. <laughs> Gein would dig up corpses from graveyards around Plainfield, Wisconsin, and use their bones and skin to make household objects. When authorities searched Gein's house, they found the likes of garbage bins, upholstery, bedposts, bowls, and lampshades, all of which were made from human remains. Many photos were taken of Gein's house, most of which depict a horribly cluttered space filled with trash and furniture. It's eerie to think how much of that stuff was made out of the recently exhumed. Perhaps the scariest picture is that of a chair upholstered with old and leathery-looking skin. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.